You know, just when I think I can crown a winner and put a product category to bed for 2022, a dark horse emerges and just threatens to upset everything. Sneaking in just under the wire, Roxanne's new Atessa streaming amplifier is here to f it up. Founded in the mid 80s, Roxon was acquired in 2016 by British speaker manufacturer Monitor Audio. And since the acquisition, Roxon has released a small number of curated hi fi products, one of which is the Atessa streaming amplifier we're reviewing today. The Atessa is a two channel Class AB integrated amplifier, good for 80 watts per channel into 8 ohms and 130 watts into 4. Possessing both analog and digital inputs, not to mention Bluetooth and AirPlay, the Atessa goes a step further by also incorporating Blue OS. And no, Blue OS is not an optional add-on. It's built in, so users can enjoy high-res music streaming through some of the more popular streaming services available today. Plus, Blue OS lets Roxon customers integrate the Atessa into their existing Blue OS whole home audio system. As for design and build quality, I love the all-aluminum chassis and that streamlined face, though the multifunction dial that rests in the center isn't really that functional. It's great for controlling volume and has a really nice feel to it when dialing the volume up and down, but as far as the rest of its functionality, I found it to be more frustrating than useful. Thankfully, it's very easy to see where you are on the volume scale thanks to those hash marks that illuminate as you turn things up and down. But when it came to control of the Atessa, I preferred to use the remote or the Blue OS app. Speaking of control, there are actually three ways to control this amp remotely. You can use the included remote, the Maestro Unite app, or the Blue OS app. Actually, you're gonna have to use all three initially in order to get up and running, or at least if you plan on using any of the Atessa's streaming or wireless music features. The Maestro Unite app will let you customize the input graphics on the Atessa, adjust the sensitivity of the included moving magnet phono preamp, as well as tailor some of the amp's standby and other features. Sadly, while the Roxen gives you balance control, there are no tone controls to be found on this model. Once I got the Atessa connected to our home network using the Maestro Unite app, getting it up and running inside of Blue OS was pretty straightforward. Despite the Roxon being a Blue OS enabled device, don't expect a great deal of added functionality like tone controls or bass management to be accessible inside Blue OS because you're not gonna find it, and believe me, I looked. But once inside the Blue OS app, you can log into your favorite streaming music services and interact with them natively, as well as switch inputs and control volume on the Atessa itself. We tested the Atessa using the Sonos Faber Lumina 2s, the Revel M16s, Bowers & Wilkins 805D4s, and Perlison's S4B speakers. Other associated gear included our Apple TV 4K, Sony X95K, Audio-Technica LP140XP turntable, and my favorite Ortofon cartridge. And of course, my trusty old iPhone running Blue OS. We compared the Atessa to a number of similarly priced and specced integrateds as well, but we're going to get to those in just a moment. And I used the Atessa to measure the in-room frequency response of those five speakers, and when compared to other amps we've used to carry out the exact same tests, the Atessa didn't add nor subtract anything from the speaker's measured performance. The Roxon is a very neutral amp, and when paired with a neutral speaker like the Perlison, the sound is very detailed, responsive, top to bottom, and spacious with terrific separation. Paired with a more treble forward speaker, like the Sonos Faber Lumina 2s, the inherent qualities of the speaker will remain, without the Atessa adding additional brightness, sibilance, or worse to the mix. This amp will not tame an outright bright speaker, nor does it have the controls to manually adjust the tone or sound to taste. So if you're looking to stop a little ear bleeding from an older pair of clips or one of BMW's more entry level speakers, this ain't gonna be the amp for you. If you have more difficult to power loudspeakers like the per listen, know that the Atessa will be up to the task. It had excellent control over the S4B's woofer and bottom end performance. Bass was always nuanced and agile. In direct comparison, the Marantz Model 40N, when playing back songs from Lady Blackbird, Audio Slave, and Crystal Method, the Marantz put more emphasis on the low notes, resulting in a greater sense of presence. Instruments, they felt more round, less focused, and weightier. The 40N is noticeably warmer compared to the Atessa's more neutral or accurate presentation. 
Shifting focus to the mid-range, the Atessa, again, it just proved to be very even keel. Artists and mid-range leaning instruments like rhythm guitars were rendered with the utmost care and attention to detail with no discernible color or flavor being added. This was true regardless of the source, be it digital or analog, including the built-in phono preamp. I especially love the way the Atessa just attacks and nails vocal inflection, a trait that was on full display when listening to Nirvana's MTV Unplugged and Fantagram's You Don't Get Me High Anymore. Highs are, you guessed it, pretty damn good. There are a few moments throughout Lady Blackbird's single, Fool Out of You, where her vocals come dangerously close to clipping the mic, something that is more audible as you turn up the volume. Now, through lesser amps, the higher points of her register in those moments will clip or at a minimum distort. While her voice does come close to cracking, the Atessa didn't lose its composure at the extremes. In other words, the Atessa's top end is the epitome of grace under fire. Now here's where the Atessa really separates itself from other amps like the Marantz 40N and even the Denon A110. The Atessa's entire soundstage presentation sits just back of the front of your speakers, but is vast in its ability to recreate both horizontal and vertical scale with better depth retrieval than the Marantz 40N. The Denon has similar depth, only it's not as noticeable given that the A110 soundstage appears to start at the speaker's front baffle, giving it a more forward-leaning presence with respect to its stage, though I wouldn't call the Denon forward overall. Where the Atessa absolutely shines is in its delineation and separation throughout its soundstage. It proved to be as adept as the almost $10,000 Technics R1000 in this regard. Dynamically, when turning things up to about 65 dB or higher, the Atessa is a real treat. I'm a bit meh on its low, low level listening, or should I say dynamics, but if you can give it just a bit of volume to play with, it has exceptional capability. Audio Slaves Show Me How to Live ranked among the best I've heard in a long while through the Roxen per listen combo. I'm guessing you can tell that I'm pretty impressed with the Roxen. That said, it's not perfect. The absence of tone controls is a miss, as is the lackluster remote, which looks to be using the same materials and button layout that you're gonna find on remotes that come with, say, sub thousand dollar powered speakers. Yes, the remote works, but it cheapens the user experience, and it also proved to be pretty directional. Also, while I love the ability to customize the input icons on the front of the Atessa, I wish Roxon had taken customization a step further by letting users, well, alter the color of the lights themselves on the amp's face. The amber reddish color doesn't really work for me, and given the unit's silver finish, I would have preferred a more white option. Lastly, the location of the phono preamp is not ideal, as the grounding post borders on inaccessible for those with larger your fingers. And now for your favorite part, comparisons. And we compared the Atessa to the Audiolab 6000A Play, Marantz Model 40N, NAD C399, Denon A110, and the Technics R1000. Now I've made a number of comparisons to some of these amps throughout the review, so I'm going to do something I don't normally do. I'm going to rank them worst to best. Now this may come as a surprise given what a workhorse this amplifier has been for us, but the Audio Lab at nearly half the price is last in this group. But that isn't to say that it was outright embarrassed. Though compared to the Atessa, the Audio Lab's top end performance wasn't as refined, nor was the bass as textural and tight. Feature wise, these two go more toe to toe, but overall, I prefer the Roxon. As for the NAD, you do get more features with the C399, but I 100% prefer the sound of the Atessa and would spend more to get it, knowing full well I'm giving up conveniences like HDMI to do it. Looking past flexibility and feature set and focusing just on Sonics, the Marantz Model 40N sits just below the Atessa for me. The 40N's warmer, rounder tone at times could sound a little less focused and even bloated in the low, low bass when directly compared to the Atessa. Tessa. Bringing features back into the equation, the Atessa simply cannot touch what the 40N or the C399 from NAD give you for less money. I would actually put the Atessa in the same league as the Denon A110, only it lacks the A110's greater mid-range body, top-end fullness, and absolute separation. When listening to jazz recordings, I got a greater sense of the venue's physical space through the Denon than through the Atessa. So, I prefer the Denon sonically, though you do get more by way of features with the Atessa for a little less money. 
Sonically, the Atessa is very much like the Technic, so much so that at times, and with certain recordings, I'm talking about you, Lady Blackbird, I am not sure I could have been able to tell them apart had I not had them side by side. If you're one who does not like that Technics takes all incoming signals and converts them to digital, you may want to check out the Roxon. While the R1000 may edge out the Atessa on the whole, if you don't have 10 grand burning a hole in your pocket, I suspect the SUG700 Mark II and the Roxon will be more or less interchangeable. The Atessa streaming amplifier from Roxon is the first real challenger that we've had that could upset the Marantz Model 40N with respect to being named our favorite integrated amplifier of 2022. Now our best of video is right around the corner, so be sure to stay tuned for that, needless to say, and regardless of the outcome. The Roxon Atessa streaming amplifier is already a winner. So that's it. That is now my take on Roxon's Atessa streaming integrated amplifier, but what do you think about it? Okay. Well, I'm going to rank mine best to worst. Okay. Because I'm going to do the opposite of you. Of course okay? you are. Because that's how my brain works. <laughs> All right. Number one, I would put at the top Technics, the Technics R1000. Duh. Duh. Then the Roxon. Uh-huh, yes, then the Roxon. And then the 40N and the Denon, they're kind of somewhere in the middle for mm -hmm. me. Mm -hmm. uh, then the Audio Lab. Okay. NID, dead last. <laughs> <laughs> Who cares about you, NID? <laughs> Not, okay. not me. Okay. okay. So in, um, here are my here are the facts that well, I used to support my case. Okay. <laughs> Starting with the Technics. Mm -hmm. To me... Uh, like you, I agree that the Roxon is the most similar in sound quality to the Technics, yeah. which is really impressive to me, considering the R1000 is nearly 10 grand. Yeah. So that's kind of incredible. Mm -hmm. But it's it could be like bad news for Technics, or is it great news for Roxon? That's, Either or. <laughs> I'm sure, depending on who who which brand you are, you. You're going to feel a certain way about, you're going to have some feelings. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Technics especially is going to have feelings. <laughs> Hopefully they never watch this, you know, yeah, so yeah. that they don't even know, but yeah. whatever. To me, it just says, speaks volumes that it's, the sound was so close. Yeah. Um, now we didn't have the G700 Mark II in the house. Not, not for the direct Not for head. the direct A being, but... Yeah. The sound of the the tone, the tone of the of, of the the cheaper Technics and the R one thousand, they're fairly similar. They are. So I feel like it's a pretty educated guess yeah. that we make that, you know, you should get a pretty similar experience. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. All right. So moving on to the Atessa Morantz forty N battle. Okay. This is a, this is a tough one for me mm -hmm. because. I personally prefer the Atessa's sound, mm -hmm. and if it had HDMI, mm -hmm. it would be hands down my pick over mm -hmm. the 40N. Yeah. But instead, you get to use that crap discount parts bin remote, and for a $3,000 amp, unacceptable. Sorry, yeah. Roxon, do better. To me, the Roxon produced a slightly more detailed sound in comparison to the Denon and the Marantz. Okay. And in specifically speaking about the 40N, mm -hmm. I felt like the Marantz showed just a little bit more bottom end. The bass was a little bit less controlled. Yeah. And some of you might like that sound, mm -hmm. but I tend to prefer a tighter, quicker bass mm -hmm. over the kind that's in your face. Mm -hmm. And while I would have previously never said the Marantz was bad at handling bass, mm -hmm. this review just has revealed some things for me, yeah. at least, um, that I hadn't really that I don't feel like I've heard before. Mm -hmm. And maybe it was having the more expensive per listen speakers. Um, yeah. You know, in, in the, in, in the mix mm -hmm. that brought that out, um, that those in the B and W's, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm just not sure that was apparent to me or as apparent before. Yeah. No, I'm, I'm with you. I'm with you. When we a would uh, the Morantz, Denon and, uh, Roxon, the Roxon definitely was more linear from the bass through to the treble. So detail wasn't being maybe absorbed or potentially overshadowed as much with the 40N and the Denon having that little bit of just, I don't want to say it's bass energy because it didn't produce a different frequency response than the Roxon, but there is something about the Denon and Morantz's low end that's just rounder 
call it tube-like. Um, I, I hesitate to use the word warmer because I think that you're going to immediately say that the Roxon is now cool or clinical or lean, and it's not. It's just the Denon and Marantz products just seem to be a little bit smoother around the edges and a little less focused in direct comparison to now what we've heard with the Roxon. I would agree. I mean, personally, I feel like the Denon does have a slightly more warm sound. It does. It out does. Out of all of the amplifiers mentioned, mm -hmm. but I'm with you. I don't. To me, when you when I hear the word clinical, mm -hmm. I think of NAD. Okay. Yeah. And I would not the classify isn't... the Roxon. No. Like that. No. Hopefully, that helps some of you. Um, <laughs> it's not yeah. sterile. Yeah, it's definitely not sterile. But yeah. you know, some people like sterile. Yeah. Some people are into that. So, yeah. you know, you, you do you. <laughs> now, the Audio Lab, I I mean, I'm I'm a little surprised that it 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 sort of fell towards the bottom for me. Mm -hmm. Um it's like you said it's been such a workhorse for us. Mm -hmm. Um it's still a great great amplifier. So, yeah. if you own it, like don't be don't go you know, don't go out to your trash can and throw it in there like it's no need to No need to go crazy. No need to go that far. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um and we have to also keep in mind that it's basically like half the price of it the is. Roxon and yeah. a lot of these other amplifiers. So it's still very good, but I don't think it quite competes sound-wise yeah. with the Roxon. All in all, I personally had never heard anything from Roxon before, so mm -hmm. I had zero expectations going into this other than I really hope it's good considering how long it took to get the thing in mm -hmm. for review. Um, I think it's built really really well oh. it's a very very modern yet industrial sort of a design mm -hmm. um i love the vents on the top which is yeah. kind of odd yeah um to even mention there's a nice um like etched logo on the on the on the top side of yeah. the of the receiver or not the receiver the amplifier sorry yeah um like andrew mentioned the knob in the middle has a really nice feel to it when you're clicking it it's yeah. it just turns really smoothly um it's got a little bit of resistance to it it's, it's great it's, i i it's wish really nice i wish they didn't go multifunction on it though because you have to like push it in and then turn it to do input selection but if you push it in too far it mutes the damn thing and so you really kind of have to like get a feel for it and it's just you just go up there and turn it you know um and the and the red lights i'm with you i'm I don't hate them, mm -hmm. you know, like I don't, I don't feel about the red lights like I do about Emotivo's blue lights, mm -hmm. but I do think that had they gone with something a little less in your face mm -hmm. uh, and for the color that it yeah. just would have made it, I don't know, just more polished. Yeah. You know, it's kind of like an angry <laughs> color in a way. Like red is all, it's, I mean, red it's is stop. a very it's, arresting it's, color. Yeah, yeah. Um, I just don't quite see how it fits into the overall design, mm -hmm. but it's a minor, it's nitpicking, you know? Yeah. Hey, look, if the color of your lights are your biggest problem, I think you're going to be good. Yeah. Yeah. Well, anything else? No, I've loved it. I, I'm with you. I loved it as well. Well, that is now our review of Roxon's Atessa Streaming Integrated Amplifier. Yes, I do have to say all of that because there is a non-streaming version as well. Anyway, what did you guys think? Let us know down in the comments below. And my question of the day for you is this. How familiar are you with the Roxon brand? Fill me in, because this is my first experience with them. If you like this video, please do give it a thumbs up, like, and subscribe. Go ahead and ring that bell so that you're notified when new videos come out. If you use any of the links that Christy left for you down below, know that that is a great way that you have continued to show your support for this channel in the work that we do here. And both of us thank you very, very much for doing that. Follow me on Instagram at Recovering Audiophile, and that's it for us today. So remember, the only person who has to like the sound of your system is you. So happy listening, everybody. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you on the next video. Bye.